another fundamental thing that we need to get your head around um, when we talk about organic chemistry, and is the concept of isomerism, of isomers. Isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula, so they have the same number of, uh, of atoms and the same type of elements, uh, but they are different compounds. The bonds, the atoms are arranged in a different way. So, for example, look at this formula C4H10. This is a molecular formula and it tells me I have four carbons and 10 hydrogens. It doesn't tell me how those carbons and those hydrogens are arranged. And this, uh, on the right, I've got a couple of examples of a way you could arrange those carbons and those hydrogens. Those two compounds I have there uh, have both four carbons and 10 hydrogens, but they are clearly different structures. And they are different structures. They have different melting points. They have different boiling points. They might react similar in a similar way because they are based on carbon and hydrogen, So, but they are not particularly uh, related one to another, except the fact that they happen to have four carbons and 10 hydrogens. We call that constitutional isomers or structural isomers. They have the same molecular formula and a different um, and a different structure. They tend to have different melting and boiling points. Sometimes they have different colors. They can have a different solubility. They can have, to a certain extent, a different chemical reactivity because they have a different structure and the structure of a compound is very important to determine how it's going to behave, when it's going to melt, how it's going to melt, what color might have, what solubility it can have in one solvent or another. All that is related to the structure of the compound. So just sharing the, the fact that they have four carbons and 10 hydrogens doesn't make those compounds much more similar. Those are structural isomers. When you have, um, the more carbons and hydrogens you've got, the, um, the more possibilities of uh, isomers you can have just by arranging a leak, for example, if you have six hydrogens and 14, sorry, six carbons and 14 hydrogens, you could have up to five different isomers. If you have seven carbons and 16 hydrogens, nine. And like, for example, if you have 10 carbons and 22 hydrogens, you could arrange those 10 carbons and 22 hydrogens in 75 different ways. You can have 75 isomers. They all happen to have the same molecular formula. 10 carbons and 22 hydrogens. And sometimes they can be, they, you know, they have a different connectivity and sometimes they might be similar in the sense that, for example, you've got these two, that they are all carbon-carbon single bonds. But if you look, for example, at a couple of isomers with five carbon atoms, C5H10, um, you could see that you could arrange those five carbons and 10 atoms in a very different way. You've got a compound that is cyc uh, cyclic and a compound that is linear, but it has a double bond. Um, so again, constitutional isomers, structural isomers, they have the same molecular formula and they have a different structure. And that gives it, it can give them, well, it gives them different properties from physical properties and also in many cases, also chemical properties. Something that is typical from organic compounds, although it's not exclusive to organic compounds, is what we call optical isomers. And that is when you have atoms that have, sorry, compounds that have the same molecular formula, apparently the same structure in the sense that the atoms are arranged in the same way, they are connected in the same way with, it, with another, but they are different compounds. And that can be difficult to, to think unless you remember that a, a carbon a, can make a tetrahedral compound. So what I mean is that when you have a carbon with single bonds, let's put A, B, C, and D, that's actually a tetrahedron. So if you imagine you would have uh, this for example, this bond here to come to to substitute in C pointing towards you away from the screen. And you would have this one here, the bond to B pointing towards the back of the screen. So away from you. 
So that's a tetrahedron. That means that when you try to rotate that molecule, if you try to rotate it, you will you could end up with or well, you will end up with the the uh, substituents B and C the other way around. So if you try to rotate that molecule, uh, if you imagine, for example, here uh, we've got these two compounds. One is carbon and the other uh, we call it minus carbon and plus carbon. And um, if you look at this carbon here, and if you look at it, the dark shaded um, bond means that substituent is pointing towards you and the little dashes to the hydrogen means it's pointing away from you. And see, so if you imagine rotating that in your mind, if you did that, uh, you would end up with the, the thing that is pointing towards you away from you and the hydrogen pointing towards you. So those two images, those two compounds are actually not the same compound. The, the substituents attached to the carbon at the bottom are pointing in different place, uh, places on the space. Molecules that do that, that they have at least one carbon that has single bonds and they are, is attached to four different things, will do that thing that when you're trying to rotate them, when you're trying to superimpose them with their mirror images, you won't be able to do it. It's a similar relationship that you have with your hands. They are mirror images, images of each other, but because of their symmetry, when you try to rotate them, they don't superimpose. The same happened with those compounds. We call those compounds chiral. We call them chiral compounds. And they, you also talk about optical isomers, and it means that they have the same arrangement, they have the same molecular formula because they're isomers, they have the same arrange, uh, bonds, arrangement of bonds, but spatially they are different, they are mirror images of each other. And it's very, it's very important for us in, well, in many cases, but for example in a biological or pharmaceutical context to think about uh, those, those things. Because if you look at those two compounds, they're both to the the two isomers of carbon, they have a different taste. Or for example, it's very common that for drugs, they, um, they have a different, um, they have a different chemical behavior because there's a lot of um, uh, chemical behavior or pharmaceutical drugs that uh, is based on how they interact with your body, with your taste buds, with your um, with, with your enzymes, etc. And shape is important. Shape recognition is important, for example, for our enzymes. So isomers, optical isomers, have can have different biological functions. And for example, here is an example of two what we call isomers of uh, DOPA, which is um, um, a pharmaceutical drug used in Parkinson's disease. The black uh, um, uh, circles are carbons, the red ones are oxygens, the blue one at the top is, uh, is a nitrogen, these ones here, and the white grey ones are hydrogens. And as you see, uh, the, they both are optical isomers and one of them is actually a pharmaceutical drug and the other one it doesn't have any, any activity. So. Uh, when we are designing um, a compound that's going to interact with our bodies or living organisms, you have to think about, will it have optical isomers? And if so, will they interact in the same way? Or could it be that one is ineffective or even worse, one could be, um, you know, detrimental. Another, a couple of examples of common uh, drugs, albuterol that are used for asthma inhalers and ibuprofen, widely, uh, widely used pain reliever, that they have, they both have what they call enantiomers, so optical isomers, and one is, um, is effective and it has biological properties and pharmaceutical properties as pain reliever, as a, as a uh, asthma reliever, and the other one is ineffective. So it is something that well, in general we're always very aware of, but especially when you are designing, when you're working with um, compounds that are going to interact with living organisms, for example with humans, you need to be aware that they might taste different because they will interact differently with our taste buds. They will have different effects when they interact with our enzymes and proteins in our bodies because they are different compounds, they have a different 3D structure and uh, they, we, they might interact differently with our, with our bodies uh, because of that 3D shape, that shape recognition that is so fundamental in many of our you know, enzymes, for example, it, that will play a role.